Previously, we looked at giving more flexibility to our modeling with the k-nearest neighbors regression algorithm. In this video, we'll look at how our familiar linear regression models can be extended in order to model nonlinear trends. As the data here show, it's useful to us in building machine learning models to be able to model nonlinear trends. We looked at the nonparametric method, k-nearest neighbors regression, that was able to learn nonlinear functions naturally due to its flexible assumption that cases with similar predictors should have similar responses. It turns out that linear regression models, when suitably extended and generalized, can handle nonlinear trends. We'll explore these tools in this video. One technique that fits exactly into the linear regression framework is polynomial regression. In polynomial regression, we use polynomial terms for a predictor in a linear regression model. An example is shown here. Instead of a line model given at the top, we use the model at the bottom where X is represented by a degree three polynomial. Computationally, this means adding new predictors, quote unquote, created by squaring and cubing the X predictor. These new predictors are then treated as regular variables in ordinary least squares linear regression. The plot on the right here shows the trend predicted by models with up to a degree two polynomial in orange and up to a degree three polynomial term in blue. The trends are slightly different, but both capture the nonlinear trend better than a simple linear regression model at the top. This would just model a straight line. Polynomial regression certainly gives us the flexibility to model nonlinear relationships, but the drawback is that it imposes a global structure on the relationship between the predictor and the response. What do we mean by global structure? For example, if we use a degree three polynomial for the predictor, this global structure is saying that the relationship looks cubic over the entire range of x, all the way from zero to six. This can be limiting if, for example, the relationship looks cubic from zero to three and linear from three to six. Is there a way to make polynomials in pieces? We can, in fact. Let's look at the idea of piecewise polynomials. Instead of fitting a polynomial globally over the entire range of x, we fit multiple polynomials locally in different regions of x. In an example here from the ISLR book, wages are modeled as a nonlinear function of age with two piecewise polynomials. A degree three polynomial with one set of coefficients is used for the region of age less than 50. A second degree three polynomial with another set of coefficients is used when age is greater than or equal to 50. The point at age equals 50 where the coefficients for the polynomial terms change is called a knot. A problem that we can immediately notice though is that the function looks unnatural. There's a discontinuity, a jump at the knot that's probably not a great model for how wage actually varies with age in real life. These discontinuities make piecewise polynomials undesirable for modeling. But it turns out that piecewise polynomials can be rescued with the help of mathematical constraints. These constraints enforce qualities of smoothness at the knots. Mathematical constraints can force the piecewise polynomials to be continuous and have continuous first and second derivatives at the knots. Having continuous first and second derivatives means that the function will have continuous slopes and continuous slope slopes. The functions that arise are called cubic splines. In the figure here from the ISLR book, the second plot is not quite a cubic spline because it's only been constrained to be continuous at the knot, but not necessarily to have continuous first and second derivatives. It looks better than the first plot because it's continuous, but it still looks a bit odd in that the slope, the first derivative, changes suddenly. The slopes go from negative just before to positive right after. The last plot on the right shows a cubic spline that looks quite smooth and still generally seems to fit the data well. This function was constrained to be continuous at the knot and had continuous first and second derivatives. One problem that arises with cubic splines is that in the boundary regions, which are the regions lower than the smallest knot and higher than the largest one, 
cubic splines can be highly variable. That is, we have much higher uncertainty or standard errors when we use statistical inference tools such as confidence intervals. This is illustrated in this figure from the ISLR book. In the boundary regions, the dotted blue lines give pointwise confidence intervals for the blue cubic spline fit. We see that these bands are quite wide, indicating that the predictions from the cubic spline are highly uncertain in this region. A small modification of the cubic spline is called the natural cubic spline. Natural cubic splines impose the constraint that the polynomials are linear in the boundary regions. We see from the confidence interval bands that natural cubic splines have lower variability in the boundary regions. Natural cubic splines are a very popular tool for nonlinear modeling for their flexibility in handling many sorts of nonlinearity. We've described conceptually what splines are and how they are better versions of piecewise polynomials, but what do they actually look like? Recall that in polynomial regression, we create new variables for the polynomial terms by raising the predictor values to the appropriate power. We've created new variables to help model the nonlinear trends by adding transformed versions of the original variable. Similarly, when we use splines, we add spline terms to a model, and we do so by transforming the original variable according to the spline polynomial functions shown on the right. These five polynomial functions were used to create five new transformed variables that allowed us to model wage as a nonlinear function of A's, age as shown previously. So for example, for a case whose age is 30, we would fill in their value for the five new variables by looking at the function value at age equals 30 for each of these five functions. We do this for all cases to fully define the five new transformed predictors, and we use these new variables in ordinary least squares regression. In summary, natural cubic splines are a flexible and popular way to handle nonlinearity. They look smooth and they fit nicely within the linear regression framework.